Chapter Six of Among the Pond People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dion Gines. Among the Pond People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter Six: The Tadpole Who Wanted to Be Grown Up. It was a bright, warm April day when the first tadpole of the season ate his way out of the jelly-covered egg in which he had come to life. He was a very tiny, dark brown fellow. It would be hard to tell just what he did look like, for there is nothing in the world that one tadpole looks like unless it is another tadpole. He had a very small head with a busy little mouth opening on the front side of it. Just above each end of his mouth there was a shining black eye, and on the lower side of his head was a very wiggly tail. Somewhere between his head and the tip of this were his small stomach and places for legs but one could not see all that in looking at him. It seemed as if what was not head was tail, and what was not tail was head. When the first tadpole found himself free in the water, he swam along by the great green floating jelly mass of frog's eggs, and pressed his face up close to first one egg and then another. He saw other tadpoles almost as large as he, and they were wriggling inside their egg homes. He couldn't talk to them through the jelly mass, he could only look at them, and they looked greenish because he saw them through green jelly. They were really dark brown like him. He wanted them to come out to play with him, and he tried to show them that it was more interesting where he was. So he opened and shut his hard little jaws very fast, and took big tadpole mouthfuls of green jelly. Perhaps it was seeing this, and perhaps it was because the warm sunshine made them restless, but for some reason the shut-in tadpoles nibbled busily at the egg covering, and before long were in the water with their brother. They all looked alike, and nobody except that one particular tadpole knew who had been the first to hatch. He never forgot it, and, indeed, why should he? If one has ever been the first tadpole, he is quite sure to remember the loneliness of it all his life. Soon they dropped to the bottom of the pond and met their neighbors. They were such little fellows that nobody paid much attention to them. The older pond people often seemed to forget that the tadpoles heard what they said and cared too. The minnows swam in and out among them, and hit them with their fins, and slapped them with their tails, and called them little big mouths. And the tadpoles couldn't hit back because they were so little. The minnows didn't hurt the tadpoles, but they made fun of them and even the smallest minnow would swim away if a tadpole tried to play with him. Then the eels talked among themselves about them. I shall be glad, said one old father eel, when these youngsters hide their breathing gills and go to the top of the water. So shall I, exclaimed the mother eel. They keep their tails wiggling so that it hurts my eyes to look at them. Why can't they lie still and be good? Now the tadpoles looked at each other with their shining black eyes. What are our breathing gills? they asked. They must be these little things on the sides of our heads. They are, cried the first tadpole. The biggest frog said so. But I don't see where we can hide them, because they won't come off. And how could we ever breathe water without them? Hear the children talk, exclaimed the green-brown frog, who had come down to look the tadpoles over, and decide which were hers. Why, you won't always want to breathe water. Before long you will have to breathe air by swallowing it, and then you cannot stay long under water. I must go now. I am quite out of breath. Goodbye. Then the tadpoles looked again at each other. She didn't tell us what to do with our breathing gills, they said. One of the tadpoles who had hatched last swam up to the first tadpole. Your breathing gills are not so large as mine, she said. They surely are, he exclaimed, for he felt very big indeed having been the first to hatch. Oh, but they are not, cried all his friends. They don't stick out as they used to. And that was true, for his breathing gills were sinking into his head, and they found that this was happening to all the older tadpoles. The next day they began going to the top to breathe air, the oldest ones first, and so on until they were all there. They thought it much pleasanter than the bottom of the pond, but it was not so safe. There were more dangers to be watched for here, and some of the careless young tadpoles never lived to be frogs. It is sad, yet it is always so. 
Sometimes the frogs came to see them, and once, once, after the tadpoles had gotten their hind legs, the biggest frog sat in the marsh nearby and told them stories of his tadpolehood. He said he was always a very good little tadpole, and always did as the frogs told him to do, and that he was such a promising little fellow that every mother frog in the pond was sure he had been hatched from one of her eggs. "'And were you?' asked one tadpole, who never listened carefully, and so was always asking stupid questions. The biggest frog looked at him very sternly. "'No,' he said, "'I was not. Each wanted me as her son, but I never knew to which I belonged. I never knew. Still, he added, it does not so much matter who a frog's mother is, if the frog is truly great. Then he filled the sacks on each side of his neck with air, and croaked loudly. His sister afterward told the tadpoles that he was thinking of one of the forest people, the groundhog, who was very proud, because he could remember his grandfather. The green-brown frog came often to look at them, and see how they were growing. She was very fond of the first tadpole. Why, you have your forelegs, she exclaimed one morning. How you do grow. What will I have next, he asked. More legs or another tail? The green-brown frog smiled the whole length of her mouth, and that was a very broad smile indeed. Look at me, she said. What change must come next to make you look like a frog? You haven't any tail, he said slowly. Is that all the difference between us tadpoles and frogs? That is all the difference now, she answered. But it will take a long, long time for your tail to disappear. It will happen with that quite as it did with your breathing gills. You will grow bigger and bigger and bigger, and it will grow smaller and smaller and smaller, until some day you will find yourself a frog. She shut her mouth to get her breath, because, you know, frogs can only breathe a little through their skins and then only when they are wet. Most of the air they take in through their noses and swallow with their mouths closed. That is why they cannot make long speeches. When their mouths are open, they cannot swallow air. After a while she spoke again. It takes as many years to make a newly hatched tadpole into a fully grown frog, she said, as there are toes on one of your hind feet. The first tadpole did not know what a year was, but he felt sure from the way in which she spoke that it was a long, long time, and he was in a hurry to grow up. "'I want to be a frog sooner,' he said crossly. "'It isn't any fun at all being a tadpole.' The green-brown frog swam away. He was becoming so disagreeable. The first tadpole became crosser and crosser, and was very unreasonable. He did not think of the pleasant things which happened every day, but only of the trying ones. He did not know that frogs often wish themselves tadpoles again, and he sulked around in the pondweed all day. Every time he looked at one of his hind feet, it reminded him of what the green-brown frog had said, and he even grew out of patience with his tail, the same strong, wiggly little tail of which he had been so proud. "'Horrid old thing!' he said, giving it a jerk. "'Won't I be glad to get rid of you?' Then he thought of something, foolish, vain, little first tadpole that he was, he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought, and when his playmates swam around him, he couldn't chase them, and when they asked him what was the matter, he just answered, Oh, nothing, as carelessly as could be. The truth was that he wanted to be a frog right away, and he thought he knew how he could. He didn't want to tell the other tadpoles, because he didn't want anyone else to become a frog as soon as he. After a while, he swam off to see the snapping turtle. He was very much afraid of the snapping turtle, and yet thought him the best one to see just now. "'I came to see if you would snap off my tail,' said he. "'Your what?' said the snapping turtle, in his most surprised way. "'My tail,' answered the first tadpole, who had never had a tail snapped off, and thought it could be easily done. "'I want to be a frog today, and not wait.' "'Certainly,' said the snapping turtle, "'with pleasure. No trouble at all.' Anything else I can do for you? No, thank you, said the first tadpole. Only you won't snap off too much, will you? Not a bit, answered the snapping turtle, with a queer look in his eyes. And if any of your friends are in a hurry to grow up, I shall be glad to help them. Then he swam toward the first tadpole, and did as he had been asked to do. The next morning all the other tadpoles crowded around to look at the first tadpole. 
Why, e they cried. Where's your tail? I don't know, he answered. But I think the snapping turtle could tell you. What is this? asked the green-brown frog, swimming up to them. Did the snapping turtle try to catch you? You poor little fellow! How did it happen? She was very fond of the first tadpole, and had about decided that he must be one of her sons. Well, he said slowly, for he didn't want the other tadpoles to do the same thing. I met him last evening, and he— Snapped at you! exclaimed the green-brown frog. It is lucky for you that he doesn't believe in eating hearty suppers. That is all I have to say. But you are a very foolish tadpole not to keep out of his way, as you have always been told you must. Then the first tadpole lost his temper. I'm not foolish, and I'm not a tadpole, he said. I asked him to snap it off. And now I am a frog. Oh, ho, ho said the voice of the yellow-brown frog behind him. You are a frog, are you? Let's hear you croak, then. Come out on the bank and have a hopping match with me. I, I don't croak yet, stammered the first tadpole. Um, uh, and I don't care to hop. You are just a tailless tadpole, said the yellow-brown frog sternly. Don't any more of you youngsters try such a plan, or some of you will be tadpole-less tails, and a good many of you won't be anything. The old snapping turtle waited all morning for some more tadpoles who wanted to be made into frogs, but none came. The biggest frog croaked hoarsely when he heard of it. Tails, 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 said he. That youngster will never be a strong frog. Tadpoles must be tadpoles, tails and all, for a long time, if they hope to ever be really fine frogs like me. And that is so, as any frog will tell you. The green-brown frog sighed as she crawled out on the bank. What a silly tadpole, she said. I'm glad he isn't my child. End of chapter 6 Recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah